Now, the High Court decision on George Pell was vital for all Australians. Whether you support the Cardinal or not, you should welcome this judgment. As I warned last month, if Pell's conviction had stood, it would have undermined our entire justice system. There's an amazing amount of emotion surrounding this case from the understandable pain of victims of child sexual abuse at the hands of the Catholic Church over the years to the ugly ideological attacks on Pearl because he's seen as a leading conservative. And then there's the religious battlegrounds, those who have seen this as either a chance to attack the Catholic Church or defend it. But in truth, as the Cardinal was driven free from Victoria's Barwon prison today, this case, the quashing of these convictions, is vitally important for reasons that go far beyond these battles and these culture wars and beyond his wrongful imprisonment. George Pell's conviction was overturned for one very clear reason. There was no substantial or plausible case against him. There was no evidence against him except uncorroborated allegations from a complainant. That's all. And those claims were undermined by other evidence suggesting they were implausible. The bottom line is that this was an historic claim that pitted one person's word against another. If it had stood, the bar for conviction in this country would have been set dangerously low, inconceivably low. Whatever you think about Pell, the church, the complainant, the media, the trials, the history or the debate, it's unreasonable, illogical and horribly hazardous to suggest people should be convicted on such thin, unprovable grounds. It's as simple as that. For all the heartache we might feel for victims, for all the encouragement we must give them to seek justice, unless there's evidence, a provable case, there can't be convictions. Now, I know despite that simplicity, it's impossible to separate this case from the contemporary debate. Pell's been at the fulcrum of the acrimonious holding to account of the Catholic Church for institutionalised sexual abuse and practices that protected and moved on offenders, exposed more children to risk and added to the pain and suffering of victims. Pell headed church efforts to resolve this long before claims were made against him. He was seen as the arch defender of the church long before the claims were made against him. He's been pursued relentlessly by the media, especially the ABC, with many reports, books and documentaries airing and recycling claims against him. There's been a strong element of trial by media about all of this. And there will be questions asked for a very long time about the Victorian law enforcement and judicial systems, how this case even led to charges and got to court given the thin evidence, let alone led to a conviction that survived an appeal and went all the way to the High Court. Still, anyone who's read the appeal judgments could not be surprised by the way the High Court has dealt with this. It was emphatic, 7-0. The entire court quashed the convictions and said no rational jury should have found Pell guilty. Pell's own statement made a very important point today saying that his trial was not a referendum on the Catholic Church, nor a referendum on how church authorities dealt with the crime of pedophilia in the church. He said the point was whether he had committed these awful crimes, and he said, of course, that he had not. Too many have seen this as their chance to seek revenge against the church, or indeed to defend the church. The High Court and the justice system, rightly, shouldn't be interested in such matters. They just need to weigh allegations against evidence. And that's what's happened. Some of the reaction today has been ugly. It will remain that way for a long way to come, I think. I won't share the worst of it, but a tweet from the ABC's Barry Cassidy seems to summarise the view of the national broadcaster. He says the High Court found there wasn't enough evidence to convict. It did not find him innocent, Cassidy said and he encouraged people to maintain whatever view they held and not to apologise for holding those views. Ignore the evidence, ignore the court, ignore justice. Strangely, I've not heard Cassidy make that same point about Labor MPs, for instance, who have been facing sexual abuse allegations. With the ABC continuing its relentless pursuit of Pell in this way, one of the more amusing tweets today came from the 7.30 program host, Lee Sales. She said her program had asked Pell on to the program on air for an interview, but that he declined. He'd probably rather go back to jail. 
but for a more sensible position from, shall we say, the progressive side of this culture war debate, have a look at what The Guardian's Gay Alcorn tweeted. She said, take a breath, everyone. The appeal was a split decision and the High Court unanimously found that the dissenting judge in the appeal, that was Justice Weinberg, who happened to be the most experienced in criminal law, the High Court found he was correct. This highlights the risks in historical cases, she said, but other priests have been found guilty and are in jail. Yes, justice has been served in cases where the evidence has been available, where it's been compelling. In the Pell matter, the missing element was clear evidence beyond reasonable doubt. There was baying from the media, bloodlust from people justifiably angry at the Catholic Church, even a sense of justice denied by a public horrified about what's been revealed through the Royal Commission and other inquiries. But there was little or no evidence against Pell, and the High Court found as much. And at a time of high emotion, it's worth seeing it this way. Rather than saving George Pell today, be that as, as it may, the High Court has done its job and rescued our judicial system, saved it from a precedent that would have undermined justice into the future for all Australians.